I'm Shasta, and you're watching Shasta's Journey, where people share their stories of God's faithfulness. And on this episode, I will be interviewing Sandra, aka my mother-in-law, and she has an incredible testimony of how God redeemed her and has used her. Despite what the enemy meant for evil, God used it and turned it into good because he is a faithful father. And I just want to thank you for being vulnerable and willing to come on here and share your story because I know how difficult it can be. Thank you for having me here. You know I love you. <laughs> well, I love you too. <laughs> and I'm so grateful because I hear all the time, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go on TV. It's so difficult. But thank you for having that willingness of heart. Thank you. Yeah. So how did you become a Christian? Well, um, actually became a Christian when I was um, pregnant of my first son, your husband. <laughs> um, when I came to this country, I was uh, 13. Um, I didn't know any English, so it was really hard for me. Um, and I was, um, I was living here with my, my brother. Um, my mom actually brought us to here because she, she was born here, but she wanted to uh, experience something different. So um, I remember at that age, I didn't want to come here um, because my whole life was going to change. Um, so I came to this country not knowing the language, and it was super, super hard for me. Uh, being a teenager, my mom was only here for two years, and then she decided to go back. And oh, wow. You were here by yourself? With my brother, wow. yes. Yeah. So um, I became independent when I was uh, 15. Um, and it was hard being a teenager and having uh, my parents with me. Um, but. She, uh, I had my brother's support, and uh, I would always go and visit my mom. Um, when uh, I think I was eight and 20, that's when I um, got married, and I got pregnant of my first son, my, um, your husband, your <laughs> lovely husband. <laughs> and um, when I became pregnant, I had a, a lot of problems with my pregnancy. Uh, I was uh, three and a half months pregnant when uh, I remember one day I was at the store and all of a sudden I just started bleeding a lot um, and I had to go to the emergency room and um, while I was waiting in the emergency room um, I just kept bleeding and I was scared because I didn't want to lose my child and um, so finally they took me in, and um, I was in a Christian at that time. Um, Enrique's dad was, uh, uh, he was a Christian, but he had left the church when he met me, when I met him. Um, and uh, I, I remember calling him and telling him I was at the hospital. And so he came really fast, and uh, when I was in the room, uh, the doctors came to me and told me that, um, that because of all the blood I lost, that uh, it was for sure that I had lost my child and that mm -hmm. they were gonna do an ultrasound and, and do what they have to do. Um, and I remember in that room by myself, I was a few minutes by myself, and um, I remember crying um, to God and, and praying in my way, because I, you know, I didn't, didn't know God at that time. I believed and God, but I didn't really have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And I remember that in that room, I I cry, and um, people, the nurses would tell me, "Oh, it's okay, you're young, you can have another child." And I remember telling God, "No, I don't want another child. I want this child." And and I remember crying and telling God, "Please let me have this child. I promise." If you let me keep this child, I will give my life to you, and I will um, have my child serve you. And uh, I remember telling him, this life, his life is gonna um, be be yours. And and, and um, I remember that. Uh, so they they got me ready to uh, to do the ultrasound. They got me ready to. Uh, they said they were gonna. Um, getting me ready for a miscarriage, you know, when you wow. have a miscarriage. So um, <clears throat> all of a sudden I, I felt peace. His dad came into the room and he started praying with me. He started praying and and telling me that God was on, in control. Um, and I felt peaceful. I, I felt peace. Um, 
so when they uh, would, they were getting me ready, they were doing the ultrasound. I remember one doctor came and he just looked at me, and and he said, "How are you feeling?" And and I said, "I, I feel okay." And then another doctor came. So three doctors came into the room, and and I remember they told me. Um, we don't know what happened. We don't know what's going on. You lost a lot of blood, and we are impressed that your child, your child is safe. And uh, they told me that um, we don't know what happened, but it looks like something. They said it looks like something is protecting your child, and and so I started crying, and I was so thankful. And then um, ever since then, so I gave my life to Jesus, but. Um, I was new. Um, I was, um, yes, I gave my life to Jesus, but at the same time, it was a process, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as a, a new believer, right? And, um, and I, had, uh, I, had my, I had my child. During the pregnancy, um, I had to be in bed rest all the time. I couldn't, I do, so hard. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk because... Um, Every time I would do something, I would start bleeding. And so they told me um, not to, they told me that I might lose my child uh, in, during the, the pregnancy, but that I have to be really careful. Um, but I always believed that um, God put that child in, my, in, in me and, and I wanted that child. And um, he was born. He was born on Christmas Eve. It was uh, a nice uh, Christmas Eve present, <laughs> Christmas present. Um, and uh, he was he was so healthy. He was healthy, and um, and and I thank God for that. And um, so that's how I became. Uh, I gave my life to Jesus. It's such an incredible story because, in in, in the midst of fear and chaos and complete uncertainty, that's when you decided to trust God. Mm -hmm. And you, you see that throughout a lot of people's lives is when it gets hard, that's when they go to God. So it's amazing that, that you were able to recognize that and yes. God was able to use it. And over the years, as you became a Christian, you were a new mom, uh, you also you started having some, some marriage issues too, right? Yes. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, actually uh, we... I started having uh, issues uh, with um, within Rikazad, my my first husband, and um, and we would still go to church, but um, just because you go to church doesn't mean that uh, you're right with God, right? Or or you really have to maintain that relationship with with God. And and nowadays, um, I think about that if what I know now I knew before. Um, I would have fought for my marriage, um, but um, yes, I started having issues, and so we got a divorce. Uh, we we got a divorce, and of course, at the beginning, it was it was really hard for him and for me, and for all of us, for the whole family, it was really hard. Um, I also have another uh, daughter. Uh, I have two daughters, actually. With my first marriage, uh, it was, um, you know, your husband and my other daughter, Cassandra. And um, it was really hard for everyone. Um, I think that um, when you fail God, it's, it's, it makes you feel bad, awful, right? And But at that moment, when you have anger, you just want to do what you want to do, you make the wrong decisions, you don't go to God, uh, you don't go to the war. And so you you make your own decisions thinking that you're making the right decision. And um, because you don't, you think you're right. And, and, and because when you're angry, you just don't think about the consequences. Mm -hmm. And even as you know, a Christian, years and years after, you still struggle with this identity or this label as a divorced woman, even though you're a Christian. So yes. how, did, how did you manage to move forward, forgive yourself and forgive Enrique's dad, um, and still deal with people throwing it in your face or the, even the enemy reminding you of your past and, and the mistakes yeah. that you did? Well, the first thing I had to deal with was uh, guilt. Um, I think that's one thing that the enemy uses a lot. Um, 
I felt guilty for many years. Um, and I think um, I came to the point that, well, I left the church. I left the church, so I uh, there was a time that um, I didn't continue with the Christianity. Um, I, I decided to leave the church because uh, I was very disappointed and and I just, um, I didn't want to continue. I, I, I felt like um, I just wanted to do my own thing. Um, but I know Enrique's dad uh, always took them, took Enrique and, and my other daughter to church. Um, and I just, I just didn't want to go back to church. Um, and I think the, one of the reasons is because I know I, I, I felt God and I was dealing with uh, guilt all the time. Um, and I think I, even though I knew that God, all I had to do was repent and God would forgive me, but I think I was having trouble forgiving myself. That's the hardest part. Yes, yes, I was, um, I couldn't forgive myself. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went back to church, uh, um, and Enrique and Cassandra were going with, to this church with uh, their dad. And I remember every time they would have an event, I would just go and support them. And so that's how I, I, I came back to, to mm -hmm. church. It's incredible too, that if you look at your relationship with Enrique's dad, God truly mended it. There was restoration there. Even though you guys aren't married, you guys got remarried, but you mm -hmm. guys were still able to find a place where you, there was forgiveness, there was yes. redemption, and so there was healing. Oh, what did that look like? Because I know a lot of people think it's, it's kind of weird because not everyone yeah. has that experience of being able to yeah. even be on talking grounds. Well, at the beginning, it was, it was, uh, was kind of a hard thing for everyone, I, even for my um, current husband at the beginning. Yeah. And um, it, because Enrique's dad was always there, even though we, uh, we got a divorce, but he was always there as a father. He was, mm -hmm. uh, he loves, you know, her, his kids and he was always there. And, um, so it's, we would see each other all the time, all the time. Uh, he would take my daughter to school and, and, uh, he was there all the time, but not all the time we had a good relationship, but God restored that. So now, um, actually, we, we're friends. He became a good friend with my husband. <laughs> and everyone, everyone is, um, they get surprised when they know that. They, they even tell my husband now, it's like, how can you be a friend with her ex-husband? Uh, mm -hmm. But I think uh, at the beginning, also, my husband was um, kind of uncomfortable at the beginning. But uh, he even tells me, you know, it, it's just happened. Uh, God... God was able to restore everyone, mm -hmm. and now we um, we actually get together as a family. You know, my ex-husband's always there, or um, when his wife does something too, uh, we go to their house. Uh, we even go out to eat. Uh, you know, the four of us. I know. Uh, I don't remember even thinking it was weird at first because I've never seen that before. I've never yes. seen that that restoration, but it, it was so it's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and I, I'm, I was impressed when people from church would tell me that's impossible. How can you be a, a friend with your ex husband mm -hmm. and and you know your husband? Um, how can that happen? So to me, it's like, I guess they don't really know God then because they, they haven't, they don't really know who God is or they haven't had an encounter. And, and yes, we make mistakes and, um, God forgives us, you know, and I think God wants us to, um, live in peace and love each other. And, and I see my ex-husband as a family. He's, mm -hmm. he's part of my family, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, um, he respects me. He respects my husband. He respects my my little one, my daughter, and uh, it's wonderful. It's um, uh, I respect his wife, mm -hmm. and we have a very good relationship. But that's only something that God can do, and I don't think everyone can understand that um, if they haven't had an encounter with God. Yeah. So they really have to know um, who our Father is, so they can understand uh, the way that God restore. Uh, people and, and what have you done differently in your marriage now 
that you wish you would have done when you had a relationship with God? Because now you know the truth. Mm -hmm. So what do you do differently now? <sighs> what did I do different? Well, I actually, God has um, worked with my character a lot because <laughs> I think that was one of my issues. Um, and I... Um, I, he still has a lot of work to do. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I know that um, he has changed me a lot. Uh, I think every process brings a purpose. And um, with my new marriage, um, I'm not saying that everything has been perfect. Um, but I, I know that um, what I did wrong in the past, and I don't, I don't want to do it again. So I have to, first of all... Um, come to God because uh, it's 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 hard I I always uh, people always tell me you have a strong character and and that way I do um, but they, that's what I show from the outside but inside um, I know that um, I'm very sensitive and I just don't show that to people because I'm um, because I've been through a lot through my uh, teenage years and, and when I was a child. So that's what I show to people that, you know, I'm strong, but deep inside me, I'm not. And so I, I go to God by myself and I cry and I say, please help me. Um, I don't want to be the same person as I was before. Um, and I try to change, first of all, myself and, and uh, accept um people the way they are, because sometimes I think the problem could be that I expect people to be how I want them to be, and and I think that's one of my biggest issues. <laughs> what I've learned is that you care. You care so much that it looks yeah. differently, you know, to, to everyone. Yes, I, I, I love my family. I love my family. I love my children, and, and I if they're happy, I'm happy. I just want the best, and, and probably I think that that love that I feel, I have used it uh, like uh, in the wrong way. Um, and because I care so much, I probably I don't let them decide or, or I think that by telling them, oh, don't do this, you know, don't do that. Um, I feel like um, I want to prevent uh, things that I went through. But I know that everyone um, has to make their own decisions. And, and God is... Um, changing me in that too and you know letting go uh, letting my family make their own decisions mm -hmm. and um but i love them and i i love what god has done with all of us and yeah. it's it's incredible i i'm really thankful and i know that he's gonna keep restoring our family and i'm so happy to have you that you're so proud of our, you know we love you so much you know you're part of our family and I know God has used you a lot too, and oh, thank you. I'm so grateful for you guys. Everyone talks about how much they dislike their mother-in-law. <laughs> well, I got a good one. So, <laughs> but thank you, you mentioned a great you mentioned a great idea though, because when you think about it, being a mother is like experiencing kind of how God feels, right? I mean, yes. You you want what's best for your children, but sometimes your children don't listen to you, even though you know what's best. And the same thing goes for God. Uh, he, he gives us these parameters he of what he wants us to do but then we just go off our own free will and we get yes. into trouble and he feels the same way so being a mom is really um it it humbles you it humbles, humbles you. you a lot yes i i think through my children and uh the mistakes i have made as a mother um god has um i have learned a lot and um and and now i know that my father you know, God, he, um, when I, the same thing, now I know that when I make a mistake, uh, I ask for forgiveness. I know he forgives me because it's mm -hmm. the same thing, the love that we feel for our children, right? When they make a mistake and um, you forgive them, you know, and, and um, that's how our father is. And, and, and I'm so thankful for that because uh, for many years, many, many years, I dealt with guilty, uh, guiltiness and, um, and God has helped me to forgive myself mm -hmm. and, and to become free. What advice do you have, especially for women who are struggling with their identity of, of this past self, of, of not feeling worthy, of feeling guilty, but how do they get to a place um, where they feel peace again like you do? Uh, the, 
I, what I can say is that um, it's only through, through Christ, through Jesus, uh, that you can become um, free and you can find your own identity. Um, you can do, um, you can't do anything on your own strength. Um, it's, uh, it could help at that moment, um, but it's going to go away. I think only um, maintaining a relationship with God, uh, going to God. I, I like to, to pray every morning, so early in the morning, and, and uh, that gives me peace, that gives me strength. It's like an everyday thing. Um, I deal with depression too, and and it's 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 hard because when you're depressed, you you um, you don't talk about it, and mm -hmm. and it's people sometimes don't even know that you're depressed, and it's the enemy always going to bring things to um, to uh, make you feel bad mm -hmm. and to destroy you, and I think that only God, only going through God. Uh, you can become free and and um, overcome all that. And I, I, I went to counseling, um, mm -hmm. and that didn't really help. So I decided to um, to go to God mm -hmm. and 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 cry. And going to God is not only on Sundays, and it's not even only going to church. It's an everyday thing. Every minute, it's it's a bond that you have with your Father. And he can only help you. So I say, um, have a relationship with your father. And if you don't have a relationship with your father, restore that relationship with your father because he, he cares for you. Mm -hmm. And he wants you to be free. Um, and he wants, the, the word God says that he has good plans for us. And uh, he's there for us. Mm -hmm. He's there for us. So just connect with God with your father. I'm really glad that you mentioned <clears throat> depression, though, because I feel like that is a topic that a lot of Christians and even the church stay away from. It's kind of taboo mm -hmm. because Christians are supposed to be joyful, but behind closed doors, we are human and we still struggle with sin, just like people who don't identify as a Christian, and we still struggle with emotions and um, you know addictions and things especially depression. Yeah. I mean, I know that I have been through it too, and um, it's important to recognize it. I think that's like the number one step, especially yeah. as a Christian. Like, it's okay to not be okay, but it's what you do with that is what's really important. It is important. Um, I think as a, sometimes we, as Christians, we become uh, re too religious, and um, we want to show that we're okay because... Um, Especially at church, if they see you uh, that you're not doing okay, people would think, "Oh, uh, you're you're sin, you're in sin, you're you're doing something wrong that God doesn't like, and uh, you have open doors, you know." Mm -hmm. And no, it's just um, it's, you know the the process, the struggles in life, uh, and sometimes it takes you there. Exactly. Uh, and I know it took me there. And um, I was really, really depressed. Didn't want to talk to anyone about it. I always wanted to be alone in my room. Um, and um, I cried to God like a little girl. And, uh, and he, um, he helped me. He helped me. And um, I, didn't, uh, I did talk to um, some friends about it, but I felt like... Um, I knew that they were going to tell me that everything was going to be okay, and mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so I, that didn't really help. Going, um, praying, going to God, and expressing how I felt, um, you know, be be open with God, with your Father. He's your Father, and don't don't see God as as just a, a God. He's your Father. You know, He's there to help you, and He has helped me a lot, and. And yes, the enemy, um, you know, the enemy is always going to want to do something to destroy people, to destroy us, but God is stronger. Our Father is stronger, and the, the re stronger re relationship that we have with our Father, um, that's very important. That's going to help a lot. Exactly, and even if you look at the Bible, Jesus had emotions too. 
Yeah. I mean, if you look when Lazarus died and Mary was on her knees crying to Jesus, you're too late, he cried too. Like, Jesus had emotions, but it's what you do with those emotions that, that that really matters. And with you, you have been through so many different things. So when when you're in that season of, of waiting and you're in the midst of that uncertainty, it can be very, very hard to trust God. Um, and I know that the people who are listening right now, they're going through something. Yeah. So what words of encouragement would you like to pour into their life? It's not, um, it's not easy to wait, but it's the most secure thing to do. Wait on God. Um, I have prayed... Um, for many things and I don't see the answer right away but I think God's time is perfect and all I can say is um, I know it's not easy to wait but believe me um, don't make any decisions um, based on your own opinion uh, just wait on God keep praying um, keep uh, uh, keep praying to God and keep strengthening your faith you know, and because that's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to destroy your faith. One, as soon as he destroys your faith, that's it. That's it. That's it. He wants to kill you spiritual, right? So just keep having that relationship with your father. And that's what helped me. Um, I'm not saying that um, I'm perfect. I'm not saying that, you know, my life is um, it's perfect. No, I still make mistakes. Um, I still go through things, and I still have my emotions. I still want to make my own decisions, but because I know that God is real and that He's there for us, I I know that waiting on God and praying, taking my, my struggles to Him and waiting on Him, I know that um, because I've seen it before, mm-hmm. I know that He's going to help me. It's not easy. It's not easy, but you just have to believe it. You just have to believe God is real. Your Father is there Amen. for you. Amen. Yeah. I love when people come and share their stories because not only does it remind me, but hopefully it reminds you watching and also you yeah. that looking back on your life and your past, even when it was hard, you waiting in the hospital bed to find out if you lost your child or not or the moment where you got a divorce you weren't really sure what your future held or, or even now where you're here on set, not really sure how that went. But thank you so much for being willing to share your heart. And thank I you. hope that it was a blessing to so many. Thank you for watching Shasta's Journey and supporting everything that God's doing. Please go to shastasjourney.com to learn more information and see if you want to be a guest as well. Hope you have a blessed day.